let us take a look at some set theory notation and symbols to help us prove property for probabilities. Suppose S is a set and A is a member of set S. Then we write A belongs to S. It means that A is an element of S. However, if A is not a member of S, you're going to write it this way. A is not in S. It means that A is not a member of set S. Consider these two sets, set including 1, 2, 3, or the set of all positive integers. As you can see, 1, 2, and 3 are members of these sets. If S is any set and P of X is a property, what do we mean by property? Like x squared is more than equals to x, or 2x plus 1 equal to 0, or any other property that you learned in algebra, precalculus, or calculus. Then a set A might be denoted this way. Set A can be written as the set of all x values in S such that px. What's the meaning of px? It means that x that are in S satisfies the property px. So you might say, hey, A is equal to the set of all x values in natural numbers such that x squared is more than equals to x. Then you might find the elements here. We can define sets different ways, but this is a very prevalent and common way to represent a set other than the roster form. Suppose you have two sets like A and B. We say that A is a subset of B. We denote it this way. We say that A is included in B if and only if for every element in set A, you can conclude that X belongs to B. That element lands in B. So if this is set B, set A is a subset of set B. It lands inside B. If you take any random element in A, that element lands in B. Going back to basic definitions, let QX be a predicate d be the domain of x. The universal statement is a statement that has universal quantifier. For every, this is called universal quantifier. It means that for any, for all, for every x in domain d, Qx, and again that Qx can be any predicate like x squared is more than equals to x or anything else. Now that we learned basic stuff, reviewed them as well, we're going to prove some properties for probability. Probability of a general union of two events, if S is any sample space, and A and B are any events, remember that A is a subset of S and B is a subset of S. This is how we defined the event. So this is S and this is event A. This is event B. They might have intersection or not. We don't know. It didn't mention that they are mutually disjoint or not. Then the probability of their union is equal to probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event, and we are getting rid of the probability of their intersection. But how is that possible? We can visually take a look at this. On the left-hand side, the blue shaded region is A minus the intersection between A and B, and the gray shaded region on the right-hand side is B minus the intersection between A and B. Now, we're going to show that A union B is a subset of A minus A intersection B union B 
minus A intersection B union with A intersection B. Then we're going to show that these two sets here and here, they are mutually disjoint, and then we can follow the formula. Well, take an element in the union of A and B. If A is in the union of A and B, you're going to have three different conditions. Either X is in A and X is in B. The second, A is in X is in A and X is not in B. And finally, X might land in B, but X is not in A. So we need to check each condition. And based on that condition, we are proving part A. In the first case, if X belongs to the intersection between A and B, so you can easily conclude that X belongs to the union of these two sets because you have X belongs to A intersection B and it's going to be in the union with any other set. So, so far, so good. In the second case, X is not going to be in the intersection of A and B because X is not in B, so it cannot be in the intersection. Well, X belongs to A minus intersection of A and B. So you can easily conclude that since X belongs to the first set, it belongs to the union with the rest of the sets as well. In the third condition, since X is not in A, so X is not in their intersection, but it means that X belongs to B minus A intersection B. So again, by the definition of the union, since X belongs to B minus A intersection B, it belongs to any union. So in either case, we just showed that X belongs to the union of A minus A intersection B, B minus A intersection B, A intersection B. Now, since three conditions are mutually exclusive, they have nothing in common, these three sets are mutually disjoint. Perfect. Now, let us show that these three unions are a subset of the union of A and B. Suppose X belongs to the set on the left-hand side. X belongs to A minus A intersection B, union with B minus A intersection B, union A intersection B. We need to show that that X lands here in the union between A and B. Well, X belongs to A minus A intersection B, or this is the definition of a union. X belongs to B minus A intersection B, or X belongs to A intersection B. Okay. In the case that X is in the first set, A minus A intersection B, it means that X is in A and X is not in their intersection. But we're going to conclude that X is in A. So since X is in A, it makes the job very easy for us. X lands in the union. In the second case, if X belongs to the second set, B minus A intersection B, by definition of set difference, X belongs to B, and X is not in the intersection between A and B. But that's fine for us. Since X belongs to B, by the definition of union, X belongs to the union of A and B. And finally, if X belongs to the intersection between A and B, it means that X is in A and X is in B. But when X is in A, by definition of union, X belongs to the union of these two sets as well. So we just proved the second part. Now, the probability of A union B can be written as the probability of A minus A intersection B union B minus A intersection B, union A intersection B, which is the probability of A minus A intersection B plus the probability of the second set, 
b minus a intersection b plus the probability of the last set, which is a intersection b. These sets are all mutually disjoint. We just showed that. So if you have visually, you can easily see that this guy is a intersection b. And the set on the left hand side is a minus a intersection b. And the set on the right hand side is b minus a intersection b. And as you can see, they have nothing in common. They are mutually disjoint. So we could take these sets, the first set, a1, a2, and a3, and use the third axiom of probability and just write it as the probability of a1 plus the probability of a2 plus the probability of a3. And again, note that a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 is empty. They are mutually disjoint. Now this is equal to the probability of a minus the probability of a intersection b plus probability of b minus the probability of a intersection b plus the probability of a intersection b. Very good. Now you can do the algebra, get rid of the opposite terms. So you end up with the probability of a plus probability of b minus the probability of their intersection.